covered by Tilson does well to hook the ball across and Bullock's in there. Scully, Booth, Huddersfield Town in front, right on half time, it's Andy Booth. So welcome to Terrier Talk, this is something brand new here on HTTV. My name's Andy Lawson, a lifelong Huddersfield Town fan, joined for this time by uh, media executive Adam Tomlinson. Adam, hello. Hi Andy, you okay? Yeah, very good and I have to say I'm rather happy to have a certain something over my shoulder. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Like a final <laughs> trophy. I have seen a lot of people with this in, in the times it's been out in the town and things. This is actually my first time to see it, so I'm... Pretty happy about that, I have to say. Uh, now, for this episode of Terrier Talk, we are going to bring this uh, as, a, as a free thing for you to watch via the Huddersfield Town uh, usual places that you'll get our videos. In future, though, we are going to have our behind the scenes look at the club on HTTV. Now, Adam, talk me through this. It's a brand new thing for yeah. 2017 18 season. So yeah, HTTV Plus has been incorporated this year. It's £45 for the whole season or £3.75 a month. And that will bring you live commentary from all town matches with pre- and post-match build-up, uh, courtesy of BBC Radio Leeds, as well as exclusive behind-the-scenes footage, interviews. I know a lot of you will have already have seen it in Austria um, from the daily updates that we did out there. Um, so basically it's just to give fans a bit more of an insight into what goes on around the club. And there is a lot of exclusive things on there as well. There are still some free things that are going to be out on, on YouTube and so on, but there's going to be a lot as well that we, we keep for HCTV Plus people. Exactly. So some of the interviews are, will go out on uh, hashtag HTTV on YouTube for free, but the majority will be on HTTV Plus for fans to get that extra little insight on the club's first ever Premier League season. Yeah, and as we go through this Premier League season, as, as Adam mentioned, there will be lots of things for you on HTTV+, Plus, including future episodes of this Terrier Talk. We are going to have some really exciting things as we go through the season, a real behind-the-scenes look of our beloved Huddersfield town. To give you a taste of now, actually, let's look to uh, what the guys got up to in Austria. There was the pre-season tour with a couple of games. Let's have a look at some of the, uh, the best bits from the tour. So yes, yeah, some key moments there from, from Austria and Adam, I've got to ask you, we see the, the British summer, it's been doing this year, it's the usual thing, if it's cloudy, it's grey, it feels very sort of autumnal. I've heard a lot about a European heat wave. Yeah. You experienced that, the players experienced that, what was it like in Austria? Everyone who went to Austria experienced that. It was, the heat was blistering, especially on the, on the two match days, so it was that hot that the players even had to go into the lake to cool down after their sessions. Now don't get me wrong, the sessions were intense, um, the morning sessions especially, they did a lot of running, a lot of hard pressing uh, and a lot on the transitional game that, that David brought in last season. But even during the games, the players played 45 minutes in the first one against the FB Stuttgart because of the weather, because it was so hot. It wasn't only that, but it was when you're on the pitch as well, it was because of the humidity in Austria, the players were struggling to breathe almost a little bit because the air was, the oxygen was so thin down there where they were. It was all right for me up in the stands <laughs> reporting on it, but for them, I dread to think what it was like. But you can look at it on the flip side as well. I mean, playing and training in that kind of heat can only do wonders for your match fitness mm. because it's easier to train and play in a hotter heat and come back and transition into a colder heat than to do the opposite. 
So that will have worked wonders for their match fitness, even though they only played a shorter amount of time. Mm. But because of the intensity that they played at for that amount of time, it will have worked wonders, like I say, going into the Premier League season. And also, we, we saw with this that uh, a lot of the content from Austria was, was brought to HTTV, yeah. but also the games then were on HTTV+. Plus. So the idea of that was a little bit like boxing almost, that the games are the main event. So in Austria, what we wanted to do was put the Stuttgart and the Torino games behind the HTTV Plus paywall and use all the behind the scenes and the interview stuff as the teaser into mm. those matches. Now, going into the Premier League season, because we can't broadcast the, the, the matches live on HTTV Plus, the interviews and the behind the scenes content will start to move behind the paywall as obviously because of the Premier League rights holders um, our matches will be shown worldwide Japan has them 30, for all 38 games for mm. example so that's why they'll now be moving behind the paywall Okay, uh, something else that I've heard a lot about this summer and seen a lot on the club's Twitter feed and things is uh, about this new idea of, of a terrier exchange yeah. for fans who have bought the season ticket we're looking to make this place just so noisy, so full of town fans but obviously not every town fan who's got a season card can get to every match that's the idea behind it. So if you've, we've got over 20,000 season card holders this year, um, which is a fantastic achievement for the club. So the point behind Terrier Exchange is that if fans are unable to attend a match, then they can go through Terrier Exchange and allow those fans that, are, that couldn't get a season card or weren't as fortunate to get a season card to come to the game and basically fill the John Smith Stadium. Now, if a fan was... Um, to attend them to trade their season card in or exchange it they will receive a credit so it's five pounds for adults for example and that money will then go off their 2018-19 season card so there is a benefit for fans to do that as mm. well but ultimately the main goal is to fill the John Smith Stadium and keep it as loud and buzzing for the Premier League season as possible. Uh, and one thing that I, I like about this is the fact that as a fan, if I know somebody who wants to come to the games, I don't actually have to give them physically my cards. Yeah. We go through this system, the Terrier Exchange, they can print off one ticket for, for the match. That, that's the great thing. If you want to find out more details, by the way, about Terrier Exchange, all the details can be found on htafc.com. So this is Terrier Talk as we continue through. Loads still to come as we, as we go through. And now let's actually hear about some of the things that have happened here at the John Smith Stadium off the pitch. There's been a lot going on over the last 10 weeks since that incredible day where Christopher Schindler put us in the Premier League. So yeah, here we are, we're in the director's box. We're just pitch side at the John Smith Stadium. We're joined by the club's commercial director, Sean Jarvis. Sean, hello. Hi Andy, hi Adam. Hi Sean. Now, for us town fans, that bank holiday Monday at Wembley will forever be etched on our minds. Days after we were delirious, we were back in work not quite believing what we'd seen. For you, that Tuesday morning, nine o'clock, suddenly preparing for the Premier League started. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure it was Tuesday, nine o'clock. I think I had a bit of a hangover <laughs> um, by then. But, but yeah, I mean, the Monday, the Monday was a phenomenal day. And as, as, a, as a fan, it is arguably the best way to go up, you know, to be... Uh, on TV to millions to see Chris Schindler scoring that goal, uh, phenomenal. And you still see it now on TV, Sky Sports, I think, still show the clips on, on adverts and things. So, so as a club, um, it's a little bit different. Literally, as you get promoted, you then have to start pressing the buttons on all the activity that needs implementing in the ground and at the training ground to sort of make us, I guess, if you like, Premier League compliant. So I know for a fact, as soon as I left Wembley, uh, I drove back, back to Yorkshire and uh, I was making calls all the way up the M1 to sort of say, right, we need to get this sorted, got to get that sorted. So it's, it's great as a fan, but pretty difficult as a club to get everything in place. Now, not many town fans would have actually believed what happened last season, say in December, in January time, but the Premier League do something a bit different, don't they, when that time comes around and if your team is in the top six or top ten and have a chance of getting promoted, they come round, look at the ground, look at the facilities that the club have got on offer and tell you what you might need to do if the club gets promoted. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, yeah, from the outside, 
it looks like we literally just press the button from that moment that Chris Inler scores, which we technically do. However, as you say, from December, the Premier League uh, start the dialogue with the with the clubs that are, are likely to get promoted to sort of make sure that they're fully aware of what they need to do. And from that point, you then start putting, I guess, little plans in place. And, and that that's quite tricky. I mean, for us, we're, we're a small, tight unit and you have to allocate an element of resource to make sure that we're in place. Um, but then that could be work for nothing. I mean, thankfully, thankfully in our case, it wasn't. You know, those plans were all implemented. But um, yeah, there's a lot of work goes on behind the scenes right the way up and, and literally uh, up to the point that you're in the playoffs, they are in dialogue with you. So they actually come and then they um, sit down and discuss what the next stages are, how you're sort of planning. And then the magic happens, we get promoted, and, and literally the Tuesday, woof, the, the, the whole world changes. Um, the interest in the club, the, the changes that we have to make around the stadium, the training ground, um, it, it, it's a whole new world. Even for little things like pre-season friendlies. Um, you know, you, you try and tee up a pre-season friendly versus a Premier League club, but actually, if you get promoted, you can't do that. You've kind of then got to look at other options. So little things like that that that, uh, that kind of kick into place, ticketing priority, all those sorts of things, um, sort of then start kicking into place with the football. Club. When the fans come back to the John Smith Stadium for that first that first game in the Premier League, there are some obvious changes to the stadium in terms of the the media facilities and how different. But also, it's not just the obvious stuff on the surface either. Underneath where we sit, there's huge changes at the moment. Yeah, massive. Um, and you know, I'll give you a little bit of a, an indication. That's kind of like the handbook that they sort of say, right, you've got to you've got to work to this. So, uh, but yeah, the changes, the changes at the stadium. I mean, if we start with the media, that's the big thing. I mean, there are uh, with the TV gantry, there are likely to be 35 countries actually visiting the stadium when we play, for example, Newcastle uh, to a sellout crowd. Uh, there'll be 35 different nationalities here watching us from those uh, that, that, that new terrace. So the old gantry is gone. And as you can see, we've now got this uh, facility that, that will house all these different cameras. And I know, a, a, I think a TV crew from Japan films every single game in the Premier League. You know, not just us, but every, every game, which is phenomenal, really. Um, then you'll sort of see around, there are TV points that are now being installed literally just just above me the all the sky cameras are going there the fantastic media stand uh, the the, uh, the south stand where uh, our, our boys will be singing there'll be camera action from there and of course the tv gantry so the tv cameras play a big big role in this uh, inside you'll see media facilities now where there is a media room so when we do our pre-match post-match conferences they'll all be in there and the, t the TV cameras will be in there I think it's set for three cameras um, the breakout rooms where you can do the interviews with all the managers so we'll have Mourinho and all those kind of people in those rooms so so yeah the media uh, just one small part of what, what needs to be there is phenomenal but as we've always sort of said the world is watching now and I think um, the Premier League said to me it was 2.8 billion people kind of watched the Premier League last year. So if you've got 2.8 billion people watching this part of Yorkshire, we've got to make sure it's absolutely right and spot on. And you can see as well, apart from the media facilities, the segregation in the South Stand is, is something that's quite colossal and quite a big change here at the John Smith Stadium. I mean, what was the thinking behind bringing that in? Obviously to get more town fans in yeah. and limit the amount of away fans? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, as, as fans saw last year, we had the big uh, segregation that KSDL put in uh, the segregation between our and home fans. So we've had, I know Anne and Julian have had a, a lot of dialogue with KSDL. We looked at Norwich and how they did it and we've now started to implement that here at the stadium. So um, yeah, and I think our fans were very keen to be as close as possible within safety of course to, to, to create the right kind of atmosphere. So the new segregation is, is kind of going, it's movable. So if the visiting team don't want to bring their full allocation we can actually um, minimize their, their their sort of seating um, but for us I think as you saw last year the atmosphere having our fans in the south stand was 
was for me one of the factors that, that got us promotion. So I think to have that continue uh, for us, it's got to be done. So the more we can to, can do that, the more we can get our fans in there, the better. And I think we've managed to achieve that. So it's a great achievement for the club and a major step, I think, uh, for us and for Huddersfield Town Football. In terms of the, the the brand of Huddersfield Town now as well, we are we've got a global presence with the Premier League, and we see that as well on the front of the shirt with brand new sponsor Oak coming in. Yeah, um, we've now created uh, global partners, and uh, global partners include Oak, as we mentioned, uh, a big Asian betting company that have paid substantially for the three shirts, so their brand is carried on the three shirts. Um, and they're great people. We're actually meeting them today to go through some bits and pieces. Um, absolute superb company, really keen on developing Huddersfield Town in Asia as well. And to that note, we've signed a deal with uh, Lizu Sports, which is a bit like football.com in China. So we're setting up accounts over in China so that they'll be able to pro promote Huddersfield Town, which is great. We've got Weissman, of course, who started a little bit of a journey with us last year. We've now become a global partner. They're a massive European brand, not so big in the UK, but working with us to develop this German brand that, uh, that is linked, obviously, to David and the players that we've got. We've actually got one or two other people that are now talking to us about being global partners. So, so yeah, the, the, the world has all of a sudden become very interesting. And last week, uh, I was talking to somebody from Qatar, talking from somebody from the States, talking to somebody from China. So you can sort of see immediately this, 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 this interest in us. And the Premier League are talking to us about maybe going to Bangalore next year. So it's, it's early stages, but certainly you can sort of see the appetite around the world for Huddersfield Town and this part of Yorkshire. And of course, being Yorkshire's only uh, Premier League football club, is fantastic. I never get tired of saying that, of course. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, we're doing our bit for Yorkshire. And I've met, I'm actually talking to Visit Britain uh, on Friday. Uh, I'll be talking to Welcome to Yorkshire about how we can raise the profile. The council emailed me last night about how we can promote uh, Huddersfield in terms of, of this area. So it's bringing all those elements together to really build our profile, not just here locally, but globally as well. Well, it's going to be an exciting season. Looking forward to it very much. Thank you, Sean Jarvis, Club's Commercial Director, for joining us on Terrier Talk. Thank you. So there's Sean Jarvis telling us about uh, how things have changed since that playoff final. Just back to the, the playoff final, Adam. Yeah. How, how, did you, how did you see that, that day? It was a bit of a whirlwind, to be honest, from a media perspective. Obviously, going to penalties, we had the experience of tweeting and doing the live match stuff from Sheffield Wednesday, so we were a bit more ready for it, to be honest, um, going into the final. But then after, once going down to see the players celebrating on the pitch, getting all the all the video footage, watching them go up and celebrate. It was really spine tingling to, to be down there involved in everything, to see the raw emotion from the players. That was the biggest thing. Colin Kwana, for example, was crying on the pitch. He'd only been with us since January and he was crying because the club had been promoted. So you could see how much it meant to them. So I dread to think what it was like for people like you, Andy, who were in, at Wembley watching your team. Yeah. Oh, what well, you say about tears with some of the players. There were tears all around. And there's still that slight feeling of, of delirium for me of that penalty, Christopher Schindler. He did score it. He didn't did score he? it. This, he is, scored this it. is real. This, <laughs> this has happened. And we spent like the last 10 weeks getting used to it. But... No, it's, it's incredible and yeah, and yeah we're there, we, we are Premier League at Huddersfield Town and we've heard from Sean Jarvis some of what's had to happen around the stadium now that we are in, in the top flight, we'll find out more, we'll get behind the scenes with some of the other things going on uh, with the stadium in the next episode of Terrier Talk. But something else Adam which yeah. we've had to get used to is that we have a lot more things with, with the media to do now, yeah. there's been a case that uh, in, in video games, in FIFA, Suddenly now, all our players are going to be represented truly. There's a case that fans can play at, at the John Smith Stadium. And it's yeah. not just that either. There's been other things with, with broadcasters and stuff, hasn't there? Yeah, like you say, fans will be able to play on FIFA 18 with Huddersfield Town at the John Smith Stadium. The players have all had their headshots, um, headshots done. And we had a media day separate to that where you'll have seen on Sky Sports before where the players do their walk up to the camera on the starting lineup. They're all done. Getty Images came and took the pictures. BT came and filmed some more interactive stuff with the players. For example, they had Rajiv Van Lepara doing the moonwalk on camera just to give a bit more flavour and colour about the players. And 
what kind of things their personalities are like. So it's, like I said, the summer as well as the final has been a bit of a whirlwind for us all, but now the season's starting, it's incredible. Well, with all these uh, these new things that have happened, as, as Adam's been discussing, we were able to sneak a, a bit of footage for you here on Terrier Talk. So let's have a look at, at what happened when all these organisations came to PPG Canalside. So here we are, Andy, and you can see Chris Lerva was the first player through on the media day. Now, interestingly enough, it was open to the players at 10 a.m. the day after Barnsley. Mm. Chris is incredibly efficient. He's the first out of the dressing room, first to get changed. And you can see on here, he was the first to come through the media day. He was in at 9 a.m., an hour before everyone expected the players to come. That's how efficient he is and wants to get everything done. And he was a true professional, as you can see. And yeah, certainly looking resplendent in his uh, blue and white stripes there now, Aaron Moy. And he, of course, a player on loan at town last season. It's so great to see yeah. him here as a, as a permanent Huddersfield Town player. And similarly to Chris as well, Aaron is very very quick on getting everything done. He was the second player through the door no. to get to get his media media days, his his walk up shots and everything sorted. Yeah, Dean Whitehead now again, blue and white stripes. What we've seen in the uh, the navy and, and pink kit. Jonathan Hogg in that now. Elias Elias. I mean, yeah. as a kit, I love this kit. I think the navy and pink kit was one that that, that really stood out, especially to the players. Phil Billing, as soon as it were, was released, said on Twitter how excited he was to be wearing it. But I think even you've got Casey Palmer, who was just on the screen. Casey was really excited when he signed with us and put on the blue and white striped shirt. Yeah. He absolutely loved it. Yeah, we, we see as well uh, some more of the, uh, the new faces and familiar faces. Of course, Christoph Bueller seeing there now, uh, Rajiv Van La Parra, uh, Colin Kwana. And they all look so ready for this Premier League season. Yeah, you can see there's a real focus in their eyes even when they were doing this. The EA Sports, it's in the game. So yeah, Adam, as we're seeing here now, we've moved on to, uh, to FIFA. And, uh, yeah. and how many cameras did EA Sports bring for this? I think there was about 10 on each row, but to be honest, there could have been more. It took them over three hours to set the equipment up. They came the night before to get it ready for 9am again. Like I say, Chris Lerva was the first one <laughs> through the door again. Um, but they got it all sorted. They had players like you see Tom Ince there pulling all sorts of faces to get different reactions to really give town fans that extra experience of playing with the likes of Tom Innes on camera. Yeah, and I mean, the expressions really are some of the really out of the ordinary, extreme seeming ones, but in the context of playing a video game, this is the kind of reactions that, that you play when you're playing with players from the Premier League. Yeah, and I think it all makes it sink in a little bit more for the younger town fans that they get to see the faces of Elias Kashunga and Colin Kwana and play with them on FIFA 18. Yeah, Adam seeing there then that uh, all the players look ready for the season, yeah. they're all there, they're training where we saw them in their kits as well. I, I think what we should do is go downstairs and have a look what's, uh, what's available in the HTAFC Mega Store. Yeah. So we're here in the, uh, the Mega Store at Huddersfield Town, joined by Luke Cowan from the store. Luke, hello. Uh, hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning. well, we're here now, we can all see the, the glorious array of shirts that we have for the, for the new season. For you guys in the, in the retail department, I imagine it's been a busy few weeks. Yeah, it uh, it certainly has. Uh, we were we looked at the we looked at the figures over the last sort of few 35, 38 days. Uh, we've literally sold more shirts, uh, as we said before, since and up until Christmas last year. Both uh, alternative shirts have sold more uh, than the away and third ever sold last season, which, which is just simply staggering. Uh, the red and black in a few days have been on sale sold more than the entire red shirt last season so it's just been incredible absolutely incredible we've served more customers in a month than we ever have before uh, every record has literally been broke in july uh, so it's it's been it's been a fun summer so far for us and it must have been a tricky situation for you obviously not knowing when you put the first order in whether town would be in the skybet championship or in the premier league of course i mean the, the, the hardest question uh, when we order shirts is you're almost planning nine months ahead what you envisage the season could be. Where we are as a club at the moment is, is every town fan's dream. I remember going to Kidderminster away on a Tuesday night and, and, and in down in League Two and, uh, and thinking, wow, this is brilliant. Uh, so, But on the flip side of things, you know, this could have been a very different season. We could have been playing in the Caribou Cup uh, last night in the first round with a squad that, who knows, with a manager, who knows. 
Uh, as it is, we, we came out in the best case scenario. So from a shirt ordering point of view, it's a case of do we order loads and gamble? Do we order uh, more than actually what we ordered, as I say, last year? But we have then have the option to reorder, which literally, and uh, you know, I'll tell my grandkids this, but the funniest story walking down Wembley Way in a, in a little bit of a heap of tears with my dad, who, who brought me to the football, ordering more shirts and for Puma, sort of saying, <laughs> I need them, I need them quick. So, uh, it is, as I say, the, the shirts have gone incredibly well. Uh, as we say, every record with shirts has been broke. Uh, in terms of the printing, the, the percentages, usually last season we had around about 35% of shirts were sold with printing. Mm. This season we're up to around about 50, uh, so half and half. Uh, most popular players are Munier's coming in uh, uh, quite up there. Obviously, the striker, the, the young, the young, uh, the young audience love a striker. Mm. Uh, Mue, because we all saw what he can do last season, and I think people can't wait to see him go up against the likes of Paul Pogba. Uh, we've had quite a few Kachungas in there, and then of course the one and only Hef. You know, everyone loves the forty-four and <laughs> so absolutely. Yeah, it's it's been a busy one, and then sort of about eighty percent of shirts have gone out with the Premier League badge mm. because let, let's face it, that's what it's about. I, I was going to ask. I mean, when we when you look at the shirt and things. Mm. I mean, I'm still to get mine. I definitely want that Premier League badge because we're there. We've yeah, made it. we are in that top flight now. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and we, we've been, uh, you know, we appreciate fans on this because fans have been brilliant with us. You know, they've been patient because the 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 name and numbers is curved this year, so it takes us a little bit longer to do it. We have to make sure that we have to measure the name, make sure the curvature is correct, and then it goes on a shallow or a low curve. But then with the Premier League badge, we've always been trying to get that in in 15 minutes. You know, it's simply a 170 press down, uh, and it, it just finishes off the shirt and obviously balances the pure legal on the uh, on the opposite side. Now we can see behind us, obviously, that the navy and pink alternative shirts still in stock here. When are the home shirts going to be back in the mega store? So, all three shirts are due for a mid-September uh, delivery to us. We'll prioritise the home because that is obviously the biggest order. Uh, we've essentially doubled up on what we had. Uh, so the home will be priority number one. That will be the first one to come, and then it'll be followed by the two alternative kits: the red and black. Uh, was is, is slightly behind the sales on the pink and navy, uh, but the red and black one I think were due first by a couple of days, and then when the navy comes in, obviously we'll fulfil the sizes that are missing at the moment. In terms of, I mean, we, we mentioned about you know the the number of shirts that we sold this time. Are you noticing? A more international flavour to the addresses that you're sending them to? Oh, absolutely. Oh, postage cost at the moment for the club <laughs> is incredible. Uh, yeah, so with the internationals, we've actually sent more international orders in the last 38 days than we did for the entire season. Uh, and probably a staggering fact is we sent more international orders in the last 38 days than we did in the entire 14, 15 and 15, 16 season together. So that, I think that obviously just shows. I mean, the Premier League, the exposure's there. We are playing in the, under a worldwide football brand now. Uh, leading countries are the US. Uh, we've got quite a following over there at the mm. moment, I've got to say. Uh, Australia's right up there as well, with Aaron following as well. Uh, and then we've got Germany for, who knows why Germany, you know, who knows. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so th those are the three popular ones at the moment. We're sending quite a few to the Far East. Uh, so... Long may it continue, but absolutely, yeah. The the the, the postman's been quite busy collecting from Huddersfield <laughs> Town this time of year. And something else that will be quite popular when it's released is the DVD from last season. I mean, why has it taken so long for it to come out? Because I know a lot of fans have been really wanting to get a, get a copy and relive what was an amazing season last year. Yeah, of course, uh, and I've got to admit, you know, myself, I want to watch it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, but essentially what happens with the DVD is we we could have put together a, uh, a montage of last season with goal highlights uh, relatively quickly in fairness, but the reality of it is, for me personally, and I think for the fan base, it's keen to understand that this will be probably the most important DVD in the club's history. Hopefully, we'll have a Champions League one to come at some point, <laughs> but who knows. Uh, so, what we had to do was reflect, look at the footage that we had. Uh, there were a few things that were missing with, uh, with David, sort of post the final. Uh, and with with the playoffs, obviously, we're almost three weeks behind everyone else in terms of either you go up or you know where you are in which league. 
So what we had to do was when the guys came back for pre-season, obviously not interfering with their extremely busy pre-season schedule as it is, but we wanted to get some reflections, uh, so get some interviews done after, so they've taken it all in and now they have an understanding of where they are and just begins to start to feel a little bit realistic. Uh, so that that's essentially why there, were, there has been a bit of a wait for it, because we wanted to make sure that the content was absolutely spot on. Uh, for what will be, I'm sure, a fantastic DVD for the club. With that DVD, with the shirts, with the hoodies, with, with everything else, you guys now run something new for this season, the Click and Collect. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, we've w what we've done is we've, we're going to take Click and Collect to almost the next level, obviously. Uh, you ask any town fan and they'll tell you the exact same thing, that the shop is too small for what we need on a match day. We, unfortunately, we know that and we are trying to work around that. Uh, as it is, the next season what we're going to do is we're going to open a brand new sort of temporary shop uh, located towards the fantastic media side of the stadium grounds uh, and the idea is that Clean Collect Orders will then be placed away uh, in the separate shop so people in theory don't have to queue up come in and then obviously get caught up in all the match day traffic and then it'll just be a really quick and simple and that temporary shop will also have all the shirts all the printing as well and when it's ready mm. uh, there is just one last question i want to ask luke as yep. well something that i'm interested in a lot of town fans are interested in sizing of the shirts yes are we talking tight fit are we talking a bit more a bit more generous shall we say uh from a yorkshireman <laughs> point of view uh <laughs> I, 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 we they are a slightly muscle fit uh, okay. this year. We've got to say, they seem to be quite tight up top, but actually in body and length, not too bad. Uh, but yeah, we have had quite a few about the shoulders and around the chest area. Uh, so probably recommendation would always be, uh, come in, try one if you can. Mm. If not, purchase it. Don't purchase with printing. If you want printing, we can always do it after. Uh, if there is a size guide online, which is inch to centimetre correct, uh, but obviously one thing that that just doesn't add, take into account is the actual fit of the shirt. So any questions, give us a ring. Uh, Twitter at the moment has been absolutely going crazy. Uh, I, I, think, I think we've been trying to respond to as many as we are, so forgive us for that one. Uh, but yeah, we're always available on the phone. Uh, they are quite busy though at the moment, same as Twitter. We are on Twitter. Uh, and if there are any questions, any measurements, you know, the team here can manage it and we, we can sort it for them. And we've also got the shirts available in child and ladies sizes as well. That's correct, that's correct. Uh, we, we, this season, we always thought it important to bring the ladies shirts because they're ever so popular back. They're on the reorder as well, uh, in the Navy and in the home. Uh, and children's shirts at the moment, are just, oh, the amount of children we've seen in them is, is just fantastic. So yeah, both are available. Yeah, well, obviously lots of great things available, Luke. How better let you get back to, uh, Thank you very much. to sorting out the Twitter and the phones. <laughs> yeah, and thanks absolutely. For joining us Thank, you. Talk. Thank you. Appreciate it. So there we are. We've seen what's uh, available for you to, to get your hands on to help support Huddersfield Town as we go through 2017-18 campaign. And Adam, we've been doing a lot of talking <laughs> yeah. with this and build up, but now the football is here. Yeah. Crystal Palace away this weekend. Yeah, it's all, all sold out. We'll get a a superb crowd following us at Selhurst Park. Uh, I think everyone's just really excited for it to get going. We've heard already on Terrier Talk on how everyone's getting prepared off behind the scenes, off the pitch, but you can also sense the excitement and the readiness of the players in the dressing room. So it'll be a great occasion for Huddersfield Town to play its first ever Premier League game. Um, with the, the stadium, as we've, we've seen, lots is going on in terms of the first game. It's a Sunday lunchtime, Newcastle United. Yeah. And for we, we've talked of Terrier Exchange, and for those who maybe want to get a ticket, limited, I think, is what we should say. <laughs> yeah, there, there's not many tickets available now, which is where Terrier Exchange will really shine through for supporters. So if you can't attend the match, what I'd urge you to do is go on Terrier Exchange, put your ticket in, and then other supporters who haven't had the chance to get a ticket yet will be able to attend. And it's really all about creating a special atmosphere here at the John Smith Stadium. And looking a bit further forward, we've got the home game against Southampton, there's the away game against West Ham and Carabao Cup action to look forward to as well. Yeah, exactly. We go straight into the second round of the Carabao Cup this year, which is something else that, that will bring a, an extra special feel here to John Smith Stadium, to Huddersfield Town. And yeah, like you say, Southampton coming up as well. So fans, if you haven't got your tickets, make sure you look out on hcfc.com on how to get them. Something else that you'll see on hcafc.com and on our social media feeds is as we take 
this beautiful trophy out and about on the road. They said I can't take it home with me. <laughs> so uh, we'll be letting you know as and when it will be available. You can have your picture taken with it and things. Check all our social media for that. Also, what we'd love you to do is get involved with Terrier Talk as well. If you've got ideas of things that you would like to see as we go behind the scenes at Huddersfield Town, we have an email address for you, which is terriertalk at htafc. Let us know the kind of things you want to see and they could appear in future episodes as we go through the coming season here on Terrier Talk. Remember as well, this time it's been something we've brought to you for free in future. Get involved in HTTV Plus to see as we go through Terrier Talk this season. But we're nearly finished for the first episode. However, I want to show you the key moments, the goals from Huddersfield Town's pre-season. 